Hey, welcome. I'm Brian. We're up in uh, Linden, Washington, right up against the border, um, just south of Vancouver, BC. Uh, my partner Christine and I run Uprising Seeds, and this is our home farm. Um, we're out in the chicory field, uh, checking out the radicchios. And um, we started uh, we started our farm about 15 years ago, um, not at this site, but um, we've transitioned over a couple rented sites, and this is our current spot. Um, we got our start doing fresh market produce, and slowly over the years transitioned to start to do from little bits of specialty produce uh, here and there. Um, but chicory has been, uh, and radicchio has been kind of a focus of ours from the start. Um, we were growing Trevisos and Castelfrancos 15 years ago um, and just have really kind of blown up with the diversity um, over the years and now are really excited with our seed work to bring a lot of that to customers that are starting to get excited about it and small farms and trying to get that incorporated into uh, seasonal eating in lots of the country. So um, we can do a quick walkthrough. Um, a lot of what we have here is variety trials. Um, most of this is not like contracted for eating or going to a CSA or anything. We've got probably about 25 different varieties in the field this year. Um, all the little pink flags you see kind of indicate where uh, one variety ends and the next one begins in the trials. Um, and yeah, let's just kind of walk through the beds. Um, this is a uh, Grimolo mix that we've got going that we direct seeded. And then, uh, so that'll be like a February, March harvest. Um, this next block is uh, Isentina, which is a Grizia type for forcing. Um, this is seed that we produced a couple years ago and are growing out. Um, next to that is uh, a couple different varieties of um, Treviso Tardivo. This is one we call Isentina that's just starting to get going, just starting to show some color. Um, probably like a mid slotted variety and you can see this one um, that's a TNT variety Sile Precoce um, is a lot further along and we've actually pulled quite a bit of this already and started forcing it in our uh, in our forcing room and then uh, a latest slot tardivo over here um, a lot of what we're growing this year is uh, coming from Andrea at Smarties Bio in, uh, in Italy and we're starting a partnership with them where we're going to start distributing some of their seeds and they're really doing some pretty fantastic breeding work over there, um, breeding in organic systems and growing organic seed, a lot of which hasn't been, a lot of the varieties haven't been available organically domestically um, yet so it's pretty exciting to be able to offer um, a lot of uh, really top quality genetics in, uh, in organic seed. Um, so let's see. So starting here, we'll kind of get into a block of the Smarties trials. Um, this is a row of all the different slots of Verona. So when we're talking about slots, we've got lots of different days to maturity within the type. So they're all Veronas, but you know, there's an early, early, mid, mid, late, and late slot for them. And maybe we can just take a quick walk down the row and kind of see what that looks like. So like, this is the earliest slot that's about 65 days. And these are kind of right in their prime right now. A nice egg shape. Which is just what we're looking for. And then as we're moving down, they kind of get into later later maturing varieties that are at different stages of development. So 
after these little early ones, they start to get a little bigger. And these ones are starting to feel pretty firm. Looking really good. And then kind of an interesting example of the diversity is, um, so this is another Verona type that uh, came back with the uh, trip Northwest Growers with Culinary uh, Breeding Network and Lane did uh, this January. And this is from an Italian grower, um, Andrea Gubilato. I'm not sure how to say his last name. Um, but you can see these are the same types and just really different looks. Um, this is going to be, I'm guessing, a pretty late maturing, but just really different frame sizes and shapes. Um, this one seems to be a really big frame. Verona, so it'll be interesting to see how that fills out in the next couple months. And then um, this bed of taller, taller stuff is um, really beautiful, Punturelle, and we're really excited about this. Um, historically, the seed we've used has been really. Um, pretty variable and we don't have a lot of success getting a really good high pack out rate. We would see maybe 40 to 50 percent of the plants really produce a saleable um, head of Punturelle. And we're just seeing as you walk down you can kind of see they're really looking fantastic, really uniform, all heading up nicely. Um, so this is, uh, this is the Smarties Punturelle and um, we're really happy with it. I think it's by far the best one we've tried. Um, and then these are a couple different varieties of pinks. This is a, a Montevano, which is a seed we actually produced uh, some of last year. And it's a really variable pink variety. Um, lots of different shapes, lots of different forms in the population kind of a fun one that has lots of potential to steer in different directions. And then on the other side of the flag, we'll have a, uh, this is the Rosa from uh, Smarties, and you can tell it's a lot, lot more refined, a lot more uniform. Um, just barely starting to develop its color. Probably if you dig in there, you start to see some, start to see some pink in the center there. Um, but we generally don't start getting into those for another couple months yet. They're some of the last ones that we, uh, that will be harvesting out of the field. And then this last bed is a similar, similar program as the Verona's where we've got, um, three different slots of Castle Francos. The first one, obviously smallest frame. Um, is pretty dense and headed up and, and ready for harvest now. And then um, the middle one is probably just getting close and uh, the last one is still a ways out. So from a variety perspective, it's really exciting to see this kind of quality of seed. Um, just in the last five years has really sort of blown up into what we're able to uh, get. Uh, with TNT and Levantia and Smarties now all represented, it seems like um, the landscape 15 years ago was pretty rough and ready, variable um, stuff that you just didn't get a lot of consistency out of. So um, it's really nice to see this quality starting to come in. really nice nice golden cores for this and this is we're really happy with these and they're looking beautiful
and dirty knife, of course, but. And then, um, so a lot of what we're interested in from a production standpoint and a lot of what we're doing for seed work is, um, is with the forcing varieties. We really love um, the whole idea of forcing and the beauty of the um, plant architecture you get and the tenderness of the leaves. So we've started experimenting a lot with forcing and sort of focusing our own seed work on the forcing varieties, the Gorizia types, the Tardivo types. Um, we work with Belgian endive. Um, and uh, from the field, we're going to go take a walk uh, over to our forcing room where we've got some of our early treviso going. We can have a look down there. So this is a makeshift uh, forcing room that we're starting to use this year. Um, it's an old root cellar um, that we inherited uh, with the farmland that we're leasing. Um, so our earliest stuff uh, is going in here the Treviso and some of the Gorizia, and then after uh, it cools down in the greenhouse, we'll probably move the Treviso out to a lagoon in the greenhouse since it doesn't need the darkness. But since it's totally dark in here, we can do Belgian endive and the Gorizia types. right now so it's really pretty early to be starting forcing our temps are still in the 50s during the day and we haven't even gotten in the 30s um, at night yet so it's kind of on the early side but we are growing an early tardivo variety um, and we're just using kind of a funky setup um, we were inspired by a lot of the pictures we saw from the radicchio trip of people just sort of making do with what they had and usually these are um, forced in big lagoons with sort of water circulating through it. And we don't, we're below grade here, so we don't have access to water. So really these are just sitting in plastic bins um, with the roots still on them. And there's about an inch or two of water in the bottom of them. And we're just leaving them. We'll probably change out the water a couple times, but they'll live in here a couple weeks. Um, while they force and what's happening is we're basically trying to blanch out the middles and these ones went in a couple of weeks ago. It's a little early yet. We'll probably leave most of these in for at least two weeks. Um, and over here, they still have some green from the field, but we'll want these totally blanched out um, so there's no green in them. These are our Isentina. And they just came in today, and usually those we strip back to just that little core, and then they'll develop into that real beautiful rose form in here. Um, the early ones we find don't develop that real deep red that's real typical of the variety. You generally get that once it gets a little colder and the plants get knocked back a little bit and start forming that rosette in the field. Um, but the early ones get some beautiful salmon tones and pinks. Um, and then there's a bin of Belgian, Belgian endive um, here on the bottom that's just, just been going a little while as well. Um, you can see they're just starting to pop up out of the roots there. And that's another one that we're really excited about growing and have been working with for many years. The first, first forcing we ever did was doing some production Belgian endive out of our 600 foot mother-in-law rental in Bellingham for the co-ops here in Bellingham and Skagit. Yeah, 
dunk in, dunk in some water and we're looking good. And then, like I said, um, we'll move the Tardivo. We've got several beds more and we'll move that out into the greenhouse later in the season and probably um, build a lagoon in there with a uh, pond liner. And that'll be, uh, once it gets a little colder in there, that'll be how we're doing, um, doing the rest of that for the year.